In this video, I'm gonna give you a nine step plan that will take you from complete beginner to Python programmer ready to apply for jobs in just 12 months. So let's get started. You may be someone that's taking up programming for the first time, or you may have tried to get started in the past, but gave up because it became frustrating and overwhelming. My goal in this video is to give you the exact steps I would take if I had to start all over again. And we're gonna start with step one. First, we must schedule our time. Now, consistency is key here. You need to study at least one hour every single day and possibly more on the weekends. Now, I know this is gonna to be tough for some of you because you have other commitments like college or full-time job. And this is why it's so important to plan out your study schedule ahead of time so it's easier to stay consistent and reach a milestone. So this is how I would schedule my time. On the left, we're looking at students and on the right, full-time workers. And of course, choose what time works best for you. But the point to note here is you must organize your study time first before committing to learning Python. And it is hard work. If you start missing days, it's easy to lose momentum and give up. Now you want to get set up as quickly and easily as possible. Luckily you only need to install one program that contains everything we need to get up and running. This program is called Thony and it's our Python development environment. It's completely free and it's designed for beginners. Thony is also known as an integrated development environment, which is essentially a program that you can use to write, edit and run your code all in one place. With Thony, you can start writing your programs as soon as you download and open the application. Now, I've a video up here that shows you how to set up Thony on Windows and Mac, and I've got a separate video that shows you how to set up on Linux. And if you'd like me to make a video on how to use Thony, let me know in the comments below. To get us started, I highly recommend the book Automate the Boring Stuff and it's completely free from the author's website. Not only will this book teach you about the basics, but it also cover programs that you can implement into your daily tasks to speed up your workflow. And because of this, I think this will really help you stay motivated. You can find a link to the source code here as well. And the author has a complimentary full beginners course on Udemy if you want to check that out. W3Schools is also an excellent resource for beginners. It provides a quick breakdown of all the various Python topics and provides lots of code examples. And finally, one of the best places to get help when you get stuck is Stack Overflow. This website has a huge community with over 100 million monthly visitors. And not only is it useful for getting answers to specific questions, it's also a place to learn about best practices in programming. It is used by beginners as well as experienced developers, and it's a resource that will be invaluable to you throughout your career. Now it's time to start learning the basics. You want to begin with the fundamental concepts of programming, such as variables, data types, loops, control flow, and functions. As a beginner, you're not expected to know what any of this means, but Automate the Boring Stuff covers pretty much all the fundamentals in the first six chapters of the book. And if you're complementing this book with W3Schools, the fundamentals are covered in the first 20 sections here. It's absolutely normal to go over the fundamentals multiple times before things start to click. You just need to spend time every single day to go over these concepts until they make sense. Once you can explain them confidently to someone else, you know it's time to move on to step five. As a full-time developer, you'll most likely work with others on larger projects, and version control is an essential tool for this type of collaboration. Now, version control is widely used among developers, regardless of programming language or job role, and it helps in a couple of ways. It allows you to keep track of changes made to your code and revert to previous versions if needed, and it also enables multiple developers to work on the same program simultaneously and helps to merge changes in a controlled way. The most popular popular version control system is called Git, and there are many beginner tutorials online. But I highly recommend this site because it explains everything you need to know about version control with Git, and they have an online book that is completely free. Now I must emphasize, it's important to learn version control early on because it's a skill you need in your career. 
Make sure you use Git for your beginner projects, even if it seems a bit of a hassle at first. The effort will pay off, especially when it comes to your interview. Employers often look for candidates who have experience with version control and can demonstrate their proficiency with Git. I'll also talk about using Git shortly to help you out with building your project portfolio. While learning and implementing the previous step, I suggest you spend the next two to three months working through chapters seven to 20. And while you're doing this, start going through the big book of small Python projects. Again, this book is completely free and it has 81 self-contained projects to play with. Each project first shows you the program output and then a full breakdown of the code. To get the best use out of this book, first look at the program in action section first, then try and write the program yourself before you look at the code beneath. Doing this will get you into the practice of thinking how to design and build programs yourself. Object-oriented programming is a tough subject and it takes time to get your head around. So it's important to have completed the previous six steps first. Many different programming languages support object-oriented programming, including Python, and it's very useful for large programs that are designed to last many years. This programming style helps to organize code, make it more reusable and easier to maintain. I have a video up here that covers this in detail. Coderspace has many example projects on his channel that use object-oriented programming in Python, and he's well worth checking out. Try and spend the next six months building projects with object-oriented programming. The more practice you have, the more you can articulate this programming paradigm in your interview. Now, you don't have to spend much time on this step, but it will impress your interviewer. Software development methodologies are plans that developers use to make sure that the software they're building is made on time and correctly. Now, you don't need an in-depth understanding of all these methodologies, but if you're employed into a moderately sized team, knowing the most popular ones such as Agile and Scrum can help you understand how your team is organized and how to communicate effectively with them. And I suggest you start learning this from month seven. Building a project portfolio is a very important step because it allows you to showcase your skills and experience as a Python developer. The projects in your portfolio ultimately depend on which area you want to work in. But if your project portfolios are original and can deliver real value to a potential audience, this will set you apart from other applicants. I think month eight would be the best time to start here. By this time, you should have a solid understanding of the fundamentals, as well as some knowledge of advanced features. Having at least three projects in your portfolio will demonstrate to potential employers that you have a good understanding of the basics of programming. Examples might include a fully functional website for a small business or charity, an app that summarizes news articles for busy people. You could build a recommender system that asks users for their top 10 films and then use Internet Movie Database to recommend new films as soon as they're released. GitHub Pages is a great way to showcase your work and make it easily accessible to potential employers and you can find out more on their website. Now it's important to remember, it's perfectly normal to struggle and feel overwhelmed at the beginning, but you have to keep going if you want to land a job as a Python developer. So if you want to get started immediately, check out this video up here and I'll see you soon.